And um, welcome to today's uh, The Brief. Today we are discussing various issues. We are starting with the by-elections. I think it's a matter that we need to discuss. What happened? What are the fallouts? What needs to be done better? We are discussing the issue of the IMF. Uh, the UPND government, the New Dawn government, clinched this deal uh, and announced it on 3rd December 2021. What is the prob problem? What is the delay? What are the issues with the creditors committee? How does it affect our economy? Then we'll discuss the public service. Uh, I think there is chaos there. Too many dismissals, too many suspensions. Um, the irregular manner in which um, the reunion of families is taking place. I think there's some issues that have arisen. This is what we are discussing today. But before I go to the main topic, um, this evening, afternoon, the Energy Regulation Board, Board Chairperson and his team, announced uh, tariff, electricity tariff adjustment. And it's a manner in which they structured the 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 meeting i mean the announcement the communication appears like they've reduced tariffs no they have not reduced tariffs they've actually increased by 17 percent they've increased um, a multi-year tariff increment you'll be able to call us on 0973 04 5292 Today we have another new number which you can call us because we saw, especially for those that are trying to reach us on WhatsApp, when this number is engaged, you can't reach us. The other number, and it will be scrolling, is 0974-808-115. So the Energy Regulation Board uh, you know, has approved uh, an application by Zesco. Uh, Zesco had applied that they wanted an increment of um, 17%, a multi-year, meaning they are applying for a period of five years and they wanted, in a, in, in a manner that Zesco should plan, in a manner that uh, the consumer should also be aware. So there's been this request, a multi-year, five-year one, where I think it's 17%, I think it's 17% per year. Uh, we will clarify later when the... Um, the details become clear. But this arises from a cost of service study for the electricity sector that was commissioned in 2019. It finished in 2021. President Daka in the H. Lemus government picked it up from there. They approved it. They issued a green paper to it and they allowed Zesco to approve, uh, I mean, to apply and increase tariff adjustment with negotiations with the regulator who is Energy Regulation Board. Um, but this is also one of the IMF conditions. That is why the PFE's issue was always that we can't remove subsidies on, 
on farmer input support program, on electricity, especially on electricity, on connection fees and on tariffs. They said we can't impose a um, uh, new adjustment without doing a cost of service study for the sector. We need to know how much does it cost Zesco to generate this power. And remember, some of the findings of this uh, cost of service study was that Zesco was, um, in, in, in terms of manpower, was over, 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 over staffed. And Zesco is well paid. Zesco staff are well paid and they were overly over staffed in comparison with other utility companies in the region. So one of the key issues is that the Zesco charges these high fees to meet some of their big overheads, such as the overstaffing. So the cost of service study and its uh, recommendation was that Zesco should trim down its staffing, reduce its overhead cost in the production of uh, power, and then migrate customers to uh, to these new charges. And the study demonstrated that they needed to increase power by by 17 percent. I think a year. I'll verify that if it's a year of it's a period of five years. I can see we already have callers. This is very good. Uh, good evening, and uh, uh, tell us where you are calling us from, and uh, you are our first caller. Good evening, Ambassador, and uh, this is Matthews from Lusaka. Mr. Matthews from Lusaka, go ahead with your contribution. Thank you, sir. First of all, I just want a clarification or maybe rather an in-depth on uh, what we saw on the past uh, by-elections in uh, these three wards. Yes. Yeah, the first uh, thing I saw was the Honorable Doreen Mwamba being, uh, being uh, the witness for UPND. Mm -hmm. That is in Rupososhi, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, want a clarification from you, or rather the ECZ themselves, if they can clarify to, to us. I've never seen it before. Mm -hmm. This was my first time where a minister is meant to be a witness or an observer, so to say, for a political party that they are representing. Oh, thank you, Matthews. Thank you very much. Then, uh, yeah, and um, on the same issue, um, we saw also the, poli the, the Zambia Police, Prime Television, Diamond TV also being witnesses there. Is mm -hmm. it allowed? Where were the political parties who participated in the election? Okay, thank you. Very good the, question. Yeah. I will yeah. I'll take time to... Okay. And then on the other issue, I think I would love to look also on the Chilila Bombwe, mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. we saw quite a lot of uh, violence, mm -hmm. of which even right now as we are speaking, Honorable Stene is still hospitalized. Yes, yes. Yeah, and then we have uh, 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 an electoral body, which has even issued a statement to say we had a fair and... Uh, peaceful elections. How peaceful is that mm. if we have people who are still in hospital? Mm. Yeah. So I think those are just my... Uh, Your thoughts. Uh, Thank you, Matthews. Thank you. Uh, you can get back as we, as we delve into the details. I'll provide the answers from our perspective. Thank you, thank you, Honorable. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you very much, Matthews from Lusaka, our first caller. So I was on the... Um, ERB approval of Zesco's uh, application. Zesco had applied for a 17% uh, tariff increase, and it's a multi-year, a five-year period. Um, but in their communication, they were very careful. They said they had reduced, uh, you know, the tariffs for uh, what they call lifeline uh, tariffs. Now, these are the most vulnerable people. This arises. From a recommendation, if you start, if you look at the cost of service study, this particular recommendation is there. It says our lifeline tariff is one of the highest in the region. This is for our poor people that probably just use power just for lights alone, maybe in a charger, but they don't use geysers, they don't use 
cooking stove. They don't use any other things, and they use about 100 units um, a month, 100 units a month. Now, this is a very small number of um, our people. The rest of you and me will suffer an increment. I will deal with the issues of the Minister of Finance and his uh, spring meetings. Let's go to the by-elections. I've got two videos that I'll play, one for Honorable Matambo and Sylvia Masevo, and the other one for uh, uh, the Patriotic Front Acting Vice President, Given Ruinda. If the videos are ready, we can play them. Then I delve into the discussions of the by-elections and their consequences. Remember, the ECZ conducted elections on Thursday, which was yesterday, 20th April 2023. These were council ward by elections. One was in Chitimukulu, in Chililabombwe, the other one was in Katilia. Kuluposo Shkuria Kuluwingu. Lupososhi is now a new district carved away from Luwingu district. Nakumuchinda in Serenje. So the UPND have scooped the three by-elections, and we want to delve into that discussion. UPND, Patriotic Front, Socialist Party, Citizen First, Zambia Must Prosper, uh, Leadership Movement, and NDC participated in these by-elections. I will delve into uh, the details of what, what does this mean? What happened? Where are we going? I will make some reference to the Patriotic Front you must be aware that I'm a member of the Central Committee, so my, my comments in regard to the Patriotic Front will be guarded because this is an opportunity. Uh, the the Patriotic Front as a leadership will have an opportunity to reflect on this particular matter and other matters. So there I'll restrict myself, but I'll give general overview. Uh, what, what does it mean, these by-elections? What does it mean when the ruling party wins these by-elections. So let's play the, the first video. Two videos, one by... Uh, and we have retained minister. our word, and we work so hard. Come 2026, we want to take all the 22 uh, constituencies and almost and all, all the, the words. We are saying thank you to the people of Copa Bills. God bless you. Thank you. I think um, I want to congratulate the people of Chitim Kulwad for showing confidence in the UPND party, in the candidate, in the president of the Republic of Zambia. We say thank you for that support and also just to say that uh, we will not fail you. The UPND government, under the leadership of His Excellency President Hakainde Chilima, means well for the people of Zambia. Trust him and trust UPND. We are doing everything possible to clean up the mess which was left by our colleagues in the past regime. And it has not been easy as you know that the economy had completely collapsed. There was no confidence in this country called Zambia anymore. But with good leadership and honest leadership, we are getting Zambia back on the national, on the map of the world. And so to the people of Copper Belt, we want to say thank you, thank you for the vote. And we want to promise you that whatever we promised, we shall deliver. We may, we may not deliver 100% because it takes time, but I can assure you that we shall work to the expectations of the Zambians and you will see the fruit yourself. So what is important is unity of purpose and I'm happy that this election was very peaceful. For us women, it was good for me to be to see that the opposition are campaigning the ruling party are campaigning the youths no violence and that's what we want as mothers of zambia because at the end of the day this is just an election we are all brothers and sisters and i think love and unity is very very important and president hakainde hakainde is telling us all the time no violence no violence so i'm happy that the youths in the copper belt have really exhibited tolerance love and all they've been doing is singing and dancing that's what we want and to the other 
opposition parties that tried. Good try. Pantu these five years, Avena Zambia, Avena Charobon Sebala, Monokutila. Not everything that glitters is gold. No, Baban to Bambo Kushiba. Bambo Kushiba. But PF, for ten years, that talk with ten salad. For two years, to a quatin salad. What is the difference? Nari Kuserenja Mayro. Permitting Kuserenja on Aranjo Kati, one Zambia, I want to buy a super good at one nation. But it's under school that one meda. See, so the this is that conducted these elections. Um Chimukulu Ward in Chilabombwe, Katilia Lupososhi, Muchinda in Serenji. The outcome, first of all, let me emphasize. By-elections are not a good barometer to see if a political party is popular or not. They are not, because a ruling party literally wins these by-elections for many reasons, uh, because they have vast resources as, as, a, as a ruling party. They can deploy ministers, uh, they can deploy f relief food, they can take um, development issues, you know, they can take uh, order a province to dig boreholes, to do feeder roads. They are and they just load over. So the they are not a good barometer to see if the party is popular or not. I used to caution the patriotic front and its leadership, and uh, because they were winning all the by elections uh, in northwestern province, western province, and we even won some in in uh, southern province towards. 2021, between 2017 and 2021, um, you'd see that the Patriotic Front won almost 70, 80 percent of the by-elections. And I kept on saying these are not barometers whatsoever to show whether you are popular or not, because you bully your way as a ruling party. And we saw, similarly, the MMD before the PF1 elections in 2011, the MMD was winning both parliamentary and ward elections prior to the elections of 2011. Similarly, the PF was winning almost all the by-elections uh, before 2021 elections. So they are not a good barometer. We should start from there. Someone can say, but Mwadiwinam Sanzala wa PF. Yeah. Uh, remember the by-elections, elections per se, we should say broadly, are about candidates. Before you bring in even the party, you can have a very good, you can be strong in an area and you feature a candidate that people do not want, a candidate that people think you are recycling, they will shy away from voting for your candidate, even if you are popular in that area. The celebrations that have come, for me, I wish to first of all express my disappointment with the Electoral Commission of Zambia. Okay, we have another caller. Um, good evening and uh, welcome to the program. Very well. Please introduce yourself and uh, where you are calling from. Uh, this is Yomani. Who? From Machero. Who? Uh, Christa Belmuape calling from Machero. Christa Belmuape calling from Machero. Yes. Wankashi Mukwete namba ya kuyu ya kwa Amerika. Sorry? No, proceed. It's okay. Ah, wonderful, wonderful. That's what we want. You want a conference? Yes. Ah. Thank you, Christabel from Matero. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Christabel. So I was analyzing. Oh, there's another call. 
Mm, hello? Christabel, are you calling back? Oh, okay. Okay, let me just put it on the ringer, non ringer. Yeah. And so that you can just, uh, yeah. So that's number one. Number two, yes, we wish to congratulate the UPND for winning um, the three world elections. Secondly, uh, we wish to congratulate all the participating candidates um, and parties that participated in these elections. But there are issues of worry. Number one, Electoral Commission of Zambia is failing to do its referee and supervisory role. There was a lot of violence. I'll show you a picture of um, former Minister of um, National Planning, Alexander Chiteme. Honorable Alexander Chiteme yesterday was attacked. Honorable Alexander Chiteme yesterday was attacked and um, he suffered injuries. This is not necessary. Fred Member was attacked. He was forced to discharge um, uh, a firearm to deter the UPND from overrunning his um, candidates. Honorable Harry Kalawa was stopped by the police from campaigning. We had similar sporadic issues in um, uh, Lupososhi. Uh, look at the picture of uh, Honorable Alexander Chiteme. He's still healing. You know, he, was dis he, was dis he has been treated at the hospital. I think he suffered a neck injury and, and his arm. Uh, this is not Alexander Chiteme. This is one of um, uh, Serenja victim. That is Honorable Alexander Chiteme. He's a former minister of um, national planning. He was one of our uh, campaigners in Chililabombwe and they were brutally attacked. Our camp raided and um, the police were called. They've done nothing. Now, what is strange is that uh, His Excellency, the President, during the swearing in ceremony of the new Inspector General of Police, he bemoaned, he literally directed the new uh, Inspector General of Police, Grafo Samba that your duty is to stop this violence. I will not allow violence in, in bus stations, market, and where elections are taking place. He repeated, actually people even clapped. On my page, I, I laughed, I said, but the president has issued these statements before, even far stronger than he did when he was swearing in Grafo Samba. And the cutters just ignore it. The leadership participates in Chidiravongwe, uh, Honorable Elisha Matamba, who is a provincial minister, is fingered in the violence that occurred. Um, and what do the elect Electoral Commission of Zambia say? They say elections were free and fair. Awane, awane, some things should be behind us. And um, let me take this call. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Very well. Kindly introduce yourself and uh, your name and uh, where you are calling us from. I'm calling you from Livingstone. This is uh, Peter Duck. Mr. Daka, good evening. Please contribute. Yes. Um, uh, I just wanted to make a follow-up point. You said... Uh, by elections, you know, can never be used as a barometer, you know, to confirm, you know, the, popular, the popularity of a party. Now, as, uh, as PF, aren't you in denial uh, with the fact that uh, Socialist Party is now coming out, you know, second? Don't you think uh, there's need for the party you not know, to do a proper introspection and like you know just burying your head in the sand and mm -hmm. just accept to say things are not okay because uh, uh, the earlier you accepted mm -hmm. that you know mm -hmm. things are not okay the better for you people will find solutions to a problem oh, but wonderful. if you just go on that telling your telling yourselves to say no we are okay we are okay you won't get anywhere as a party Mm -hmm. Because look, your concentration hours, but you are not. What I've, what I've observed is, uh, as a party, you haven't accepted 
the mm. reality on the ground. Mm. Okay, okay. Thank you, Peter. I will, I will, I will attend to that issue. Um, I will attend to that issue. Let's take this call. Okay. So, I was saying there was violence in the um, uh, in, in, in this election as seen in Serenje, as seen um, in um, Chililabombwe, as seen in Lupo Soshi. For those that are trying to reach us, let me give you the number once again. You can reach us on 0973-045292 and 0974-808-115. Hello. Hello, good evening, uh, Ambassador Mwamba, President Mwamba. Good evening. How are you? I'm very well, my brother. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. I'm actually calling you from the USA. Oh, wonderful. Please introduce yourself. Uh, which state in the USA are, where are you at? I'm actually calling you from Washington. Ah, okay, thank you very much. Your name? Washington, D.C. My name is uh, Justin Amlenga. Okay. Thank you very much, Justin. Yeah. Proceed with your contributions. Yeah, actually, for me, there are actually a few things that I want to point out. Uh, number one, I want to talk a little bit about the by-elections that were held in Chiravombe, Rupososhi, and also in Serenje. Mm -hmm. uh, it's time that you, as a patriotic plant, should be able to listen to what people are saying. Mm -hmm. Patriotic plant right now, there is no doubt, has a lot of support on the ground. But the things that are happening right now are quite frustrating because mm -hmm. people have called on uh, for, for a convention, they want people to. They want you people to go give direction. Where do we stand? What is it that is going to happen tomorrow? Mm -hmm. These are small, small things that actually affect. You remember that uh, politics is about numbers, mm -hmm. people that mm -hmm. are actually supporting you. But if no one is coming up to give a direction, no one has actually come out positively to say this is where we stand, this is what we have. We all know we have an issue at the courts, but surely when people are calling for something, we should be able to give an update. This is where we stand, this is what we are trying, we are doing. We are at this point. But it's quiet, it's so frustrating. And trust me, in as much as when I know, for me, I know that these elections were not won genuinely by UPND and then mm. because it was important for them to give out a certain picture. The more reason they did everything that they could do in order to win these by elections. That mm. aside, but these have a bearing, they have a serious bearing on the on going forward uh, of the patriotic front. People begin to get tired and frustrated because right now people have a lot of hope in this party. Mm. But as long as uh, you are not putting things in place, the things that people are talking about. This issue, don't treat it rightly. It mm. is a serious matter. People want a leader for mm. this one. We know what is happening, but please let us do the right thing. Hear what people are saying. It is important. Thank you very much, President Mwamba. Thank you. Following you. Thank you, Justin. Thank you very much, and uh, I'm glad that uh, you've... Maybe let me just generally speak uh, briefly to the issue of... Um, the Patriotic Front and its state. First of all, you are aware that the PF lost power in 2021. And as soon as they lost power, they conducted a post-mortem report. And um, when they conducted the post-mortem report, it informed them of what needed to be done. Number one, that the party needed to rebrand. Number two, that some key persons needed to resign. And they needed to, then the party needed to go to um, a general conference, extraordinary general conference, to elect the new leadership, especially the head of state. So they began the process where President Edgar Lungu stepped back. This was in 2021. Stepped back. He appointed Honorable Given Luwinda as acting president and uh, tasked them to prepare for a general conference. 
in fact, were very ambitious that it would take place by December 2021. But of course, we had just come from an election. The PF had just lost power. There was a lot of reorganization that needed to be done. Further, the UPND went in overdrive in what was called the fight against corruption, where it literally destabilized the leadership because most of the leaders were, were always at the police, were always at DEC, were always at the ACC. Somehow that disturbed it. So there was a reflection by the Central Committee that this matter should then, we should have a conference by uh, 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 June 2022. And the party began to work towards that. And um, you saw that uh, they went in overdrive. In fact, they proceeded with the preparations. A committee was set up um, that then should prepare for this conference. It was headed by Mr. Davis Chama, who is a national chairperson of uh, the party. They, they, they brought out a budget that was approved by the Central Committee. We even began the process. You remember that nine of us even uh, expressed interest by even paying an expression of interest fee of 200,000 kwacha. I am among the nine that paid that 200,000 kwacha. And we said the, the conference should take place in, you know, by, uh, uh, at least by mid-year. Well, we, by June 2022, we pushed it to September. September was not feasible. We then sat in September and put it tentatively to end of 31st March. We said, let's give the organizing committee six months in which we should have this general conference because there are certain things that needed to be done. You know when you, you lose power, you don't know if your members are still there or not. You don't know if the leadership is still there or not. So one of the key issues that was dis decided was that there should be a national audit of members. There should be a, a national audit of leadership. And where the vacancies existed, powers were given to provincial committees and to the central committee to fill those vacancies. So the process started heading for 31st March uh, uh, 2023. Uh, it was a six-month period, and we, we began the preparations. A few provinces were even visited by the acting president, Honorable Given Lubinda. You saw that when we held um, our central committee in January, uh, that there was an issue. One of our colleagues, Honorable Mao Sampa, uh, who is material MP and also who was appointed into the central committee by Honorable Given Lubinda, uh, held a press conference at which he issued certain remarks where the party was offended, party leadership were offended, and they thought it was a disciplinary matter. The party dealt with the matter. Honorable uh, Mao Sampa was invited to that central committee meeting. I was in that meeting, and subsequently the acting president then suspended him. He went to court. This has also been part of the destabilization point because now we are to deal with the issues in court however let me emphasize the matters in court um, do not affect the day-to-day -day running of the party and there should be no excuse why the party should not hold the conference so we are expected to hold another central committee meeting next week at which we'll give you the details i thought i could discuss just broadly those issues uh, good evening, and uh, tell us your name and where you are calling us from. Hello. Hello. Please tell us your name and where you are calling us from. Yes, uh, Ambassador Inanoma. Yes, sir. This is Jacob Kashwa calling from Kasama. Jacob Kashwa Kasama. Please proceed. What are your contributions? Yes. Um. You know, I think PF is still having a problem. The problem number one, the candidacy of two, two papers. Why do you like fighting in that? Question number one. Number two, you are not giving people the direction as the previous caller stated, the one who fought for America. You know, if, if a if you are telling to give you proper guidance to people, all the supporters you had, 
you will find that at the end of the day, you are nothing. No wonder you are seeing in a by-election, people are being intimidated because they are not organized as leaders of MPC. And the major thing which contributed the, the loss of election and the federalization, like the way UPN has started the federating violence as right like now. The same thing, it is the thing which happens for PF to lose, to lose the election. So we need you, MPCs, whoever who is there, please give guidance to people. You have the people, the ground, wherever it's PSP, they are dreaming about the PSP to bounce back. But unfortunately, you are not giving them guidance. As you stated in your statement, you said you were you supposed to have a convention in December 2021. This is 2023. We are going to issue there and there, no other and what, no direction, just like that. Anyway. We are working to uh, from, from the Patriotic Friends to give the guidance for the people. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Wakashima. Thank you very much. You know, I, someone sent me this picture, or this video of um, one of our members in the rain. I don't know if he's one of our members, but he's sitting in the rain. He says, that is how PF members are feeling. They feel disgruntled. They feel that you are not providing direction. They feel that you've left them in the cold as a leadership. I understand. A loss is painful. Whatever I've said, a loss is painful. There is no justification. In Serenje, you know, and um, uh, Rupososhi, we had um, um, Socialist Party come second. And you need to uh, commend Honorable Fred Membe. He's very determined. You will see he comes in, a, in a, these elections. Sometimes up to four, five weeks. He deploys vehicles sometimes, you know, to literally each polling station. He creates camps. The PF knows these, these tactics. The PF knows how to work hard to win the hearts of our people. The PF knows how to reach to our people. So, yes, I agree with you. There could be issues of laxity because we have a lot of MPs up to almost 60 MPs. We have members of the Central Committee that are almost also 80. We have former leaders. You know, we have many people we can deploy. We saw a lot of effort in Chilawombo, and you saw um, the results are very, very uh, good for the PF because they worked hard at it. So there's no substitute for hard work. No substitute for hard work. You will have to work hard for it. And if the UPN is determined to cause violence, to use the police and this is it, are you going to sit and cry? The party, I think, will discuss when we are in the Central Committee. We have to propose strategies. Because we thought that the, the UPND will respect you know, human rights. They will not deploy violence. We thought that they will respect the rules of elections. But clearly, the very things that Zambians rejected, the UPND will do them even double at all cost to ensure that they have a good name and they celebrate to the media that they've won elections. But at what cost? At what uh, expense? So if that is a plan of the UPND, that uh, Matthews asked a very good question. He said he has never seen where he sees the minister. Uh, is, uh, the minister was um, uh, one, of, um, one of the party agents. He says, I've never seen this. And Matthew is not only the minister that was a party agent in, uh, in Lupo Soshi. Even in uh, Chidilabombwe, Elisha Matambo was also a party agent. You know, he was part of the electoral officers and he was visiting things that we haven't seen before. So the opposition has to wake up. Sometimes they have to coordinate and work together. For the patriotic front, where I belong, for the patriotic front, where I'm even seeking leadership, we have to rise to the challenge that the UPND will use violence, they will use the police. They have probably picked up the same template from the PF and they'll deploy it. So what do you do? Do you just lament and cry and cry like babies? No, not at all. 
you have to rise to the challenge and challenge them. Because you've relaxed thinking that they'll respect the law, thinking that they'll not deploy the violence. But look what has happened. Um, if you wish to call us, you can call us on 0973 uh, Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Please tell us where you're calling us from and your name. My name is Kelly. Kelly, please tell us uh, uh, your contributions. Uh, Mr. Mamba, how are you, sir? I'm very well, Kelly. How are you? Where are you calling us from? From Osaka. Wonderful. Yes, sir. Sir, I've got only one question for you, sir. Yeah. I don't know, maybe it's out of the topic or what, but I wanted just to find out from you people, like as a PF for administration. Currently, uh, I've got one question first. When are you having your convention? That's one. And another question is that uh, who is leading the, who is the president in the party? Because I've seen, not yet, you have not elected any party at the moment. That's why the party is disorganized. That's why we don't have whom, who is leading, giving guidance. You understand? So I would like you to shed more light on those questions. Okay, thank you, Kelly. Thank you very much. Let me quickly attend to those two questions. Kelly wants to know, when are we having the conference? Yeah, it was scheduled for 31st March. 31st March has passed up, just given the circumstances. As a party holds a central committee meeting, one of the issues it will determine is a reschedule of the party conference and another date given that should be uh, released to. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Please tell us your name and where you are calling us from. Yeah, this is me, Mr. Mukuka, calling you from Mazabuka, Trinity Mukuka. Please proceed with your contribution, Mr. Mukuka. Trinity Mukuka from Mazabuka. Yes, please. Yeah. I'm quiet. I'm quiet. I'm quiet. I'm quiet. I'm quiet. So so Trinity, thank you for your contribution. Thank you very much. So Kelly asked a big question. Who is the president of the party? The party president remains President Edgar Lungu. That's why the nine of us have come up to come and replace him. That is the purpose we're having a general conference. Because remember, um, members of the Central Committee, including President Lungu, were just elected in 2021. He has indicated that um, he's, he's into retirement. He has written, um, you know, he has informed uh, cabinet that is. Um, into retirement years. That's why he appointed the acting president, Honorable Given Lubinda and Honorable Nixon Shilangwa, to carry out his executive function of president. And he's been in retirement. You've seen, you've never seen him in a by election. You've never seen him at a party activity. You've never seen him campaigning or hold press conferences. He's never done any of the things he should do as president. He's currently president of the party until we elect a new president. But his president who has then, you know, who has taken a back seat and submitted his powers to these two. Um, but remember that uh, this is a 
matter that is in court where one of our colleagues challenged the legitimacy of those decisions. So we can't discuss and delve into those issues because the matter is in court. Uh, you can call us on 0973-045292 and 0974-808-115. We will go to the next item, the IMF. The Minister of Finance today held a press conference where he was briefing us over his visit to Washington. You remember that he was in Washington for what they call spring meetings. These meetings um, uh, are gathered by ministers of finance, ministers of economy, because they are called various by various countries. They are also ministers of national planning and then central bank governors. And then, you know, multilateral, uh, plurilateral, and uh, other stakeholders also meet to this meeting. And the minister talked about the $188 million that has risen from a staff level agreement review that was done and issued to Zambia, that Zambia was doing well because it had implemented removal of subsidies. It had implemented some of the conditions that they had agreed in the uh, staff level agreement that was signed on 3rd December 2021. The one that was released on 6th April 2023, the staff level uh, agreement review. This is the one that talks about the extended credit facility where Zambia is supposed to get a bailout of $1.3 billion. It has stalled because the IMF wants um, first the creditors to agree. They have to give assurances that uh, they have to write off the debt for Zambia or reschedule the debt for Zambia. Let me take this call. Uh, good evening. Oh, we lost the caller. So the agreement from December 2021 has told. Lucky enough, the first one, uh, government received $188 million. The one that was approved on 6th April, they're supposed to receive another $188 million. But the IMF have, have applied breaks. They said, ah, ah, but that one, we pay First, resolve the issues with the creditors. We have told President Daga in the HLMA, jump on that plane, go to China. Because of the debt of about $13, $14 billion, the single largest creditor is China with about $6.3 three billion dollars. We've urged the president jump on that plane, speak to China directly. A bilateral mechanism will work. Uh, and remember the debt is almost private because even the one with China is um, is with, our, with banks because we're financing our projects. So project finance came from Exim Bank and other development banks. The other debt is with uh, bondholders like the euro bond and then we have the one for multilateral and uh, plurilateral debt this is the one with imf world bank uh, 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 africa development bank european investment bank the bank of america we owe them um, this money so the, the total is about um, uh, 13.9 14 billion dollars the minister, before he went to Washington, issued the new debt levels. And I noticed that our foreign debt jumped from, uh, you know, the PF left it at $12.9 billion. But now the debt is at $18 billion for foreign debt. Hello, good evening. Please tell us your name and where you are calling us from. Honorable, oh, good evening once more. This is Matthews. Yes, Matthews, thank you very much. I think I was the, the first caller. Yes, yes. Now, yeah, I'm just listening on the IMF. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know what happens when one is sworn in as president of the nation, especially our African leaders. Ambassador Mumba, you've worked with so many presidents. You <laughs> <laughs> so, to disclose some of the things that go behind doors. 
Um, because before President Church assumed power, I think he was assuming, to say, actually even after, I heard him at one point where he said the, the EPF borrowed about, the, is it 40 something billion? Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, you know the propaganda. But what I want to say is, as we are also discussing about the PF uh, credits or debts, so to say, uh, can also the UPND government come in the open and say how much they have borrowed? I think I was listening in Parliament the last time with the Honorable Mwela, mm -hmm. the Chiengi uh, Member of Parliament. Mm -hmm. She challenged the Honorable Minister of Finance to say, what have you used six point billion mm -hmm. within two years that they have borrowed? What have you used it for? Mm -hmm. Can we hold our government accountable? Mm -hmm. How are they borrowing so much within that period? And for what use? Mm -hmm. Yes, the, UP, uh, the PF borrowed. Mm -hmm. But most of their borrowings, like you have put it, were infrastructure in mm -hmm. nature. Yes. Yeah, so um, for me, I would just want someone from the UPND to be candid enough and come in the open and say the six point so 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 million we billion we've followed, this is how we've utilized it. No, Matthews, what I'll do is just as soon as you hang up, I'll read you from the minister's yes. own document because I was also surprised. What I know is that the PF left a debt of about um, $12.9 billion. Actually, actually uh, I can round it off to 14. Yes, okay, yeah, we, yes. We, with um, a publicly guaranteed debt for state-owned yes. enterprises. And then they left a local debt of about $10 billion. So the total yes. publicly, public debt and publicly guaranteed debt was about $23 billion. But the minister yes. issued a statement, so I'll read it to you after you hang up. So that I save you talk time. Okay, and yeah. then um, on that issue only, that's why I'm saying, are you able to come out in the open and tell us what happens behind the closed doors? Because there is no way at 60 years, almost 60 years of independence, that we can still be going out there with uh, a, a, an open hand uh, bowing down for, 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 for some, uh, someone to help us. When in our own bedroom there is a two tracks or four tracks of suji light which is being stolen, Mm, mm, what mm. is wrong with us as Africans? What is wrong uh, with us as Zambians? Mm, eh? mm -hmm. We have a lot of minerals. We have a lot of resources. We have a lot of youths who are just loitering the streets. Mm -hmm. Wow, we have plenty of water, plenty of uh, skills mm -hmm, that we mm -hmm. can utilize our land for. Yeah, it's yeah. not for Kenya's uh, parliament to decide to cancel the MOU. That 20,000 hectares was going to, 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 the, to the Kenyans. When we can easily find these people in the streets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. yes. So that's, that's the one thing I want to hear. Let's be very candid as we lead the people. It's yeah. too much of propaganda everywhere. It's mm -hmm. too much of po po finger pointing and hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. When are mm -hmm. we going to wake up and wake as a people? When I was growing up, we used to grow up as a united unit, united force, whereby people would even go in the villages, do the roads together without any supervision. You mm. just be told on when is there, there will be this. Mm. But this is not happening anymore. Yeah. Where are we headed to? Thank you, Matthew. Let, let me answer you those questions. Let me, let me conclude on one thing. Yes, yes Matthew. I'll get to you in your inbox. You'll talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm grateful. Thank you for your But make your last contribution. Thank you. Ah, okay. Thank you, Matthews. Uh, Matthews has asked a, a very fundamental question. What happened to this president? What happens? How come they abandoned, you know, these uh, pledges? Very simple. There are a lot of hidden hands that you don't see. Take, for example, President Hakainde Ichilema is a very good example of this. Um, the UPND, they thought they were part of the inner circle. When the president gets elected, they just see new people appointed to very key positions. And before long, you are outsiders. You thought you were insiders, and the outsiders become insiders. And on economic policy, you've seen the president as external advisors, such as 
Brentes Foundation and Tony Blair Foundation. These unelected people uh, sway so much that uh, you and I wonder. But the president promised this. Why is it taking us this way? That would be my answer is that uh, uh, leaders have to guard themselves. By the time they realize what's happening, that they left their followers and fellow leaders behind. Sometimes it's too late. They're in their second term and they haven't achieved anything. So our debt is now at $32 billion. Okay? That is our total public debt is at $32 billion. And I was trying to understand. Like Matthew said, can they demonstrate? They always say the PF borrowed, the PF were careless. How has it jumped to $32 billion? Here is what the minister said. He issued two statements that I'm going to read for you. One was a ministerial statement on the performance of the economy as of 31st January 2023. This was issued in Parliament on March 2023. The second one was an addendum to the minister's speech, which is a summary of the Republic of Zambia's public sector debt as at end of December 2022. In end of all, I'm a glass, I need to look because the print is very, very fine. But this is what the minister says. As at end of December 2022, Zambia's public debt was equivalent to US dollar $31.6 billion, excluding interest arrears and US dollar equivalent, it came to $32.8 billion. And here is a breakdown. Zambia's external debt, excluding interest, the central government debt, uh, and so the central government debt and those that are owned by SOEs, these are state-owned enterprises, loans and guarantees amount to, number one, $14 billion dollars and $1.5 billion for state-owned enterprises like Zesco. Remember, like the loan that Zesco got for Cafe Gorge, and then $91 million, respectively. And there is disclosure in the other document, which the, the minister presented. Because the minister said, we are actually paying, we are servicing debt, although we have suspended debt the last three years. We haven't been paying since 2020. He says, however, we have paid, like this year, we paid $130 million. This was paid as at end of December um, to multilateral creditors. Remember the one I talked about? Um, IMF, World Bank, Africa Development Bank, European Investment Bank. These were, we are still servicing some debt. But it's those loans like China, Eurobond, where we are not paying. And he disclosed that we have paid $130 million this in 2022. But he says the central government arrears to external creditors, because we are not paying debt, and the clock is ticking. So we owe them $4 billion, and six, uh, million, $4.06 billion. This is as a result of uh, central government arrears to our external creditor that involves the principal amount because we owe that principal amount and the interest is accruing. Remember, we are on debt standstill as at end of December 2022. This has risen from 2.16 when, when they took over in December 2021. So it's now standing at 4.6 billion. This somehow explains partly how the party, I mean, how the debt has jumped from $12.9 billion foreign debt and is now standing at $18 billion. But they've also borrowed, for example, the $750 million from World Bank. All of it was released last year. And um, there's another debt from IMF, the $1.3 billion. 
we've begun the disbursement already. We've gotten 188. We are expecting another 188. So the numbers have jumped. And the local debt has jumped from 193 billion to 210 billion, a jump by 9%. Why is this so? Because they are running government on, on debt. They are financing the treasury from issuance of government securities. These are government bonds and treasury bills. So this year alone, they obtained $15.6 billion. These are government securities through Bank of Zambia bond auction to finance um, uh, uh, the, the budget, you know, the, the deficit, where they can't meet from our domestic revenue, from grants, from donors, and from loans. So the difference they will raise it, this 15.6 billion a kwacha. Sorry, this one is in kwacha because our national budget is in kwacha. If I said dollars, please forgive me. This one is in kwacha. So they are also borrowing. While you are calling the PF careless, you are calling the PF reckless, you are also borrowing. And like Matthew said, the PF would borrow for, um, for infrastructure. You, you are borrowing for what? So those are very, very good questions. And I listened to the minister as a, a announcement. They will go for a break. I'll be appearing on, on a discussion with Movie TV with my dear brother, Akashambato. Just look at uh, Akashambato Masheke. Just look at uh, this small brief. And I, I want you to join in the conversation. Okay, so we don't seem to have it. Oh, that is the damage. Saturday, on matters arising on Prime TV, we host opposition patriotic friend, presidential aspirant, Ambassador Emmanuel Mwamba, as well as Masheke Akashambatwa, an economist and data scientist who supports the UPND administration's policies. As they debate on national matters with Ambassador Mwamba, don't miss the big debate on matters arising. Join your host, Kelvin Tabola Chifokolo, at 21 hours. Don't miss. This Saturday, on matters arising on Prime TV, we host opposition patriotic friend, presidential aspirant, Ambassador Emmanuel Mwamba, as well as Masheke Akashambatwa, an economist and data scientist who supports the UPND administration's policies. As they debate on national matters with Ambassador Mwamba, 
Don't miss the big debate on matters arising. Join your host, Kelvin Tabola Chifokolo, at 21 hours. Don't miss. This Saturday, on matters arising on Prime TV, we host opposition patriotic front presidential aspirant ambassador emmanuel mwamba as well as masheke akashambatwa an economist and data scientist who supports the upnd administration's policies as they debate on national matters with ambassador mwamba don't miss the big debate on matters arising join your host kelvin tabola chifokolo at 21 hours don't miss So you can call us on, um, as we go to the last segment, the last one hour segment, you can call on 0973 You can also call on 0974 808 The last one I saw um, uh, a secular by the Chief Justice, where they've deployed new judges across the country. That's what is happening everywhere. Um, there are a lot of directors and assistant directors that have been uh, are sitting in abeyance. They don't know where they are. Uh, and they, they are all being parked in that cabinet office or at PSMD for a deployment. The trouble with that, if you keep someone and you have to pay them on the salary and you can't recruit because num uh, positions and titles are titled are, are linked to the position so if you just send someone who's a director and you take them to psmd it it it, it doesn't work it's difficult for you to employ new people so there's a lot of chaos in the civil service then the suspensions flimsy reason all you need is someone to allege that you are pf and you are gone we think that the civil service should be professional. Today, the prime minister, the prime minister from, from UK, has been fired for bullying. He has been forced to resign. What is bullying? Where you are unprofessional to, to, to civil servants, where you shout at civil servants, where you threaten them with dismissals. The UK have crafted a law, an anti-bullying law, to protect civil servants. If we had such a law, the entire cabinet would lose power. I mean, they would lose their position because the stories we are hearing are not good. Right from the president in the manner that he treats staff, uh, cabinet ministers and others, we think that we should be professional. Civil service requires protection. Civil service is the engine to deliver service to our people. Politicians don't deliver service. It's the civil service. Politicians come and go. You will see Kaunda came. You see, you find civil servants that worked under Kaunda. Civil servants that worked under Dr. Chimuwa. Civil servants that worked under Manawasa. Civil servants that worked under Rupia Banda. Civil servants that worked under Michael Sata, civil servants that worked under Edgar Lungu. Even when President Daka in the HDM leaves, he will leave people that he has employed. Your duty as a leader, your duty as cabinet and ministers, is to tailor that machinery called civil service to now deliver you know, the various policy that you want implemented, the various public service delivery that should be done. This screaming we see against civil servants, scandalizing them at every turn, and they have no right to reply. When you call them names, you call them thieves, you call them PF, they have no way in which they can come and say, yes, from a land of Yachini, over President Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Please pull, lower down your volume and then speak to us. Okay, we've lost that call. Please call us back. Call us back on 0973-045292. Today, we're discussing the recent by-elections. We've bemoaned the violence that occurred, the vote buying that occurred. But the PF and the opposition need to do more. 
We've congratulated whoever participated in the by-elections, but the PF have to put their house in order. The PF has to learn from the MMD. They have to learn from UNIP. You don't want to go into oblivion. Um, MMD spent his entire time in court, and they went into oblivion. You don't want to go that way. A lot of our people, Zambians, want, of course, they want a ruling party that works. But they also want an opposition that is strong to provide checks and balances. Uh, good evening, and tell us your name and where you are calling us from. Good evening, Mr. Mom. Good evening. Yeah, I'm calling from Choma. Your name, sir? Mulenga, from Choma. Mulenga from Choma. Okay, thank you very from much. Choma, yes. Yes, Mr. Mr. Mamba, you speak very well. The problem is that we don't have trust in you for the sense that when you were, the PF was in power, you were not advising the system the way you were saying. So our request is... Um, oh, thank you very much. Mr. Mulenga brings up a question that comes up a lot on my Facebook page. advising? It's a very large infrastructure. I was permanent secretary. I have a job to do. I work as permanent secretary. I was ambassador, high commissioner in South Africa. I had to ensure that I do my job. And many times I arrived at work at six and left maybe around 20,000 hours everywhere I was in. You know, visiting Limpopo, Cape Town, I was in Madagascar, I was in Lesotho. You have your own job that you are doing. If you want to worry about what's happening back home, you will not do your job. I was in Ethiopia. I was ambassador uh, for Ethiopia, Djibouti, Sudan. I was permanent representative to the African Union. I was permanent representative to the United Nations Economic Commission. And there's all these backlog of work, meetings that you have to attend. So you, you, there are portfolios of work that we do. Um, good evening. Good evening once more. I'm Matthews from Lusaka. Yes, Matthews. Uh, Matthews, you are, you are regular today. Thank you for supporting the program. <laughs> I'm just calling to respond to Mr. Mlenga from Choma. Yes. I'll answer him by asking him another question. Yes. How is the Pilato performing nowadays? <laughs> is he criticizing President Ichilema? <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I think that was my answer to him. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you, Matthews. So, uh, Matthews Vanga Fuako. So, the president has a set of advisors, but I'm a special assistant for economics, special assistant for legal. They are paid to advise the president. It's not up to a permanent secretary to advise the president. The president has all advisors. He has advisors even from Brentes Foundation from South Africa, Tony Blair from UK. He has advisors. The president, he rules the country with cabinet. They sit in cabinet. I was a permanent secretary, I don't sit in cabinet. I was ambassador, I don't sit in cabinet. The president rules the country with his advisors and with cabinet. They formulate policy and then they implement. And it's rare that um, a, a, a PS would criticize the president. Just now, there are so many things that have gone wrong in this government. Have you seen a minister criticize the president? Have you seen an ambassador from Ethiopia or from Washington or from New York criticize the president? It doesn't work that way. If something goes wrong, we want to I rarely discuss myself, but this question never go away. So let me just attend to it. If something goes wrong, the price of millimil is 300 kwacha. The minister of agriculture has exported all the maize. Is it up to an ambassador to issue a statement and tell the president? Have you seen any ambassador that President Daka in the HLM appointed? Even a vocal one, like Panji Kaunda, has he issued a statement that President Daka in the HLM and his government have been careless? No, he can't. Because the president and his cabinet and his advisors are seized with the matter. They know that the country doesn't have maize. They are looking at imports. 
with his set of advisors and with his cabinet. That's how you run the country. So I know there is this huge burden on me that why were you quiet? There were many times that I foraged into uh, local matters, which was pro probably shouldn't be, but I would call m maybe my colleagues you know, from State House and advise quietly. There are times when I wrote certain things on my Facebook page and people feared that, that I'll be fired by tomorrow because I was adventurous and wrong thing is a wrong thing. I spoke about debt. I, I, I condemned the issue of gassing and urged the police to arrest whoever was involved in gassing. There are those things that I did. But first you need to understand the structure, Bamlinga from Choma, the structure of government. That's how government works. It just doesn't work where your DC from Choma will condemn the president. Then they should resign. But you have faith in the system that the system will resolve. I knew that I had the president. Whether it was President Michael Sata, if I had proposals, I walked to his office and gave him the proposal from Kasama. He either could take them or not. I gave proposals and advice to President Ed Galung. He could either take them or not. And like I said, presidents have their own structure. So, not to digress, we are discussing by-elections. What needs to be done? Why is the violence back? Why is the vote buying back? Why are ministers descending on a word by-elections? To win at all costs where you even deploy violence? What's happening with the PF? Why aren't they resolving their issues? I've just narrated that the Central Committee will be meeting, uh, I think, next week, at which they will attend to the concerns of the general conference. They will review the issues relating to the by-elections and uh, you know the laxity that has emerged. And also, we need to come up with a strategy because the UPND is determined to use violence. It's determined to use vote-buying, whatever the law says. It's like they're not aware that donors are watching. They're not aware that civil society is watching. They want to win those elections at all cost. What do you do with a government that is behaving that way? So we, we need to come up with a strategy. We can't just lament and cry. You need to come up with a plan. How do you counter that? If they are vote buying, how do you expose the corruption? We need to come and discuss that. And, and uh, from the Patriot Front perspective, we'll come and uh, inform you what decisions there will be. Yeah. Please call us on 0973-045292 and on 097-4808-115. We were discussing issues of elections, issues of the IMF has been delayed, and we think that this government should focus itself on raising domestic revenue, uh, ensuring that we get the best out of the mines, ensuring that Sujilite from Wombe Farms, from Wombe uh, uh, Mine in Luapula in Chembe, God from Kansenseli, I think we need to ensure that um, that is done. We need to ensure that that is done. Let's just check if we are still live, because I just saw that we, we got cut. Ah, okay, so I'm being assured that we are still live because my phone cut and I thought um, uh, we are not. So call us on 0973 Call us on 0974-808-115. The next matter we are discussing is civil servants. We want to acquire this. I want to listen to our I want to listen to our They are being treated like criminals. These are civil servants that have worked for all the six presidents. And they are being treated like they've just um, started work now, which is unfair. There is a program for where President Nagainde Ichilema directed that families should be united. Something funny is occurring there. We've heard that those that they perceive to be PFO, people that they do not like, are being purged from Lusaka and Dola, Livingstone, Kitwe, and urban areas to create room to then uh, allow for that policy to be implemented. Instead of implementing the policy on first come, first serve basis, you must understand that, um, that uh, urban areas are full. There are no spaces. That's why you see that teachers 
who are based who are on a school in Lupososhi are working from Chivelo or from Matero or from where where they've run away from rural areas but they are on a salary in those schools that are deserted. You will see the Auditor General issue a statement that there are 20,000 ghost workers. There are no ghost workers. I kept on belaboring this point, that there are no ghost workers per se. What is there is that you have civil servants that have moved from the rural areas, from health centers, and they've come, populated themselves in urban areas, whether it's in Mong, whether it's in Kasama, whether it's in Solozi, Chipata, whether it's in Choma. They leave the peripheral and the rural areas. They come to the areas along the line of rail. Then somehow they are placed and they begin to work there. But they are on a salary structure of those places that have left. I will take a brief break uh, about our issue with Aka. Aka, where I will appear within tomorrow. Run that advert as I reorganize my phones. This Saturday, on Matters Arising on Prime TV, we host Opposition Petioti Trant, Presidential Aspirant, Ambassador Emmanuel Mwamba, as well as Masheke Akashambatwa, an economist and data scientist who supports the UPND administration's policies. As they debate on national matters with Ambassador Mwamba, don't miss the big debate on matters arising. Join your host, Kelvin Tabola Chifokolo, at 21 hours. Don't miss. This Saturday, on matters arising on Prime TV, we host Opposition Petio Tipfrand, Presidential Aspirant, Ambassador Emmanuel Mwamba as well as Masheke Akashambatwa, an economist and data scientist who supports the UPND administration's policies. As they debate on national matters with Ambassador Mwamba, don't miss the big debate on matters arising. Join your host, Kelvin Tabola Chifokolo, at 21 hours. Don't miss. This Saturday, on Matters Arising on Prime TV, we host Opposition Petioti Trant, Presidential Aspirant, Ambassador Emmanuel Mwamba, as well as Masheke Akashambatwa, an economist and data scientist who supports the UPND administration's policies. As they debate on national matters with Ambassador Mwamba, don't miss the big debate on matters arising. Join your host, Kelvin Tabola Chifokolo, at 21 hours. Don't miss. Uh, thank you very much and thank you for listening to us. So those were our contributions. Some of us, uh, the cause are getting cut. Um, today is Friday. Probably you need to rest. We can't bombard you with these difficult and technical issues. Let's just begin to summarize. Here a bit they announced uh, tariff increase for electricity, but like I said, they fooled our journalists. They started with what they've called a reduction um, for those we call lifeline tariffs, those that use 100 units per month, and there are very, very few. Uh, so they said there's a reduction there, but the biggest band of um, uh, uh, utility use for power use uh, have received an increment because ERB has approved Zesco's application for a 17% increment. It was a multi-year application. This arises from the cost of service study that says Zambia has to graduate to price mechanisms that are cost reflective. Um, the PF couldn't do it. They said they needed first to do a cost of service study. They engaged a European firm that did this cost of service study, which was ready in 2021. President Akainde Chilema's government took over from there and approved the recommendations. Most of the recommendations were approved with varying degrees. And uh, they began for the next five years to migrate all of us to what they're calling cost reflective study. Take interest in it. So there's no reduction. Whatever the newspaper headlines or TV and radio are telling you, there's actually an increment of about 17%. We'll, we'll determine whether it's 17% per year 
or it will be 17% in a period of five years. Um, the Minister of Finance at the press conference today where he was discussing the IMF and the challenges of um, uh, the IMF bailout of $1.3 billion, they are still struggling with the issues of um, uh, 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 creditors. The creditors are asking pertinent questions that government must answer because government is looking for a reduction of about debt cancellation or forgiveness of $4 billion to $8 billion. We don't know if they'll get it, but the discussions are underway. Uh, the last matter was civil service, the crisis in the civil service. And uh, our, our, our people are really under siege, and we need to discuss it and discuss it further. Then there was an issue of by-elections. Why is the UPND deploying violence? Why are they voting, uh, vote buying? Why are they using these crude methods that Zambians rejected? For the opposition, will they sit and lament to the PF? What is happening the PF? You are the largest political party in the country. But you may lose the ground if you do not attend to the issue of leadership. You resolve the issue of leadership. I announced that the Patriotic Front Central Committee will be meeting to look at the past by-elections and uh, enforce a new strategy of how to respond, especially that the UPND is no longer even bothering about uh, following following the law. Um, uh, Socialist Party, congratulations, they've done very well. The leadership of Fred Member, you see camps in the areas, deploys resources in those areas. Um, it was good to see our dear brother, Citizen Fest, uh, participate in Lupososhi, uh, our dear brother Harry Kalava, and for the first time, Zambia Must Prosper also participated in this by election. Um, I think those were our issues, and thank you for the calls that came. I've seen some of the messages, I'm unable to read them just now, but to we'll respond if we can. Um, move on to Akwalesa, I'll see you on Monday. Uh, we have to wind up. Um, uh, it's Friday and we have to give you time to rest. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord, you know, his face shine towards you and give you peace. I like ending with this from Numbers 6 verse 24 to 26. These are good blessings. For our colleagues in the, who are Adventists, happy Sabbath. And good night.